The electric vehicle versus internal combustion vehicle debate always has two major factors on which the electric vehicles are judged. Firstly, the single charge range helps customers understand the amount of time that they would spend charging their cars daily, based on their daily commute. In today's video, we're going to talk about what happens to a Tesla after 100,000 miles. Do you need to get a maintenance service? What do you need to do? While the electric cars were slow to get off the blocks in this regard, there are a few models now that boast a 400 mile plus or 640 kilometer mile range. With a distinct supercharger network now getting established, the charging time for that range varies between half an hour to one hour, depending on the manufacturer. The second point to be considered is the battery life, which tends to degrade over time. After a specific period of time, depending on the number of miles run and the number of charging cycles completed, the battery will start losing its capacity, which will affect the single charge range. Tesla Model 3 battery life after 100,000 miles, extreme low maintenance and minimal battery degradation. Recently, a Tesla Model 3 owner, Kazi Imam, opened up about his experience after having completed 100,000 miles, or 160,934 kilometers, in just over two years. That kind of mileage comes down to an average of 137 miles, or 220 kilometers, per day, which is quite extensive. With that much daily running of the battery, and just as much of fast charging, one would expect quite a bit of battery degradation. Despite that, Imam mentioned that he's able to log up to 305 miles or 490 kilometers on an average of 100% charge rate on his long range variant. With Tesla having given the Model 3 long range variant a 322 mile or 518 kilometer range, this gives Imam's car a 5% decrease in battery range after completing the 100,000 mile mark. That's not bad at all. While Imam did mention that 305 miles is an approximate figure, one needs to understand that that's just a 5% battery degradation after having used the car for an average of 137 miles daily for two whole years, and that's quite acceptable. The average Tesla customer will need almost five to six years to log that kind of mileage, which means lighter usage than what Imam did. This in turn means less battery degradation. With Tesla continuing to send many software updates over the air, with improvements in features such as battery preheating, the battery life will keep getting better. Battery preheating is the process of heating your battery to a temperature optimum for fast charging, which puts less load on the cells. Imam also mentioned the total cost he had to bear in this two-year period, from maintenance to electricity costs for charging. He spent a total of $2,985 on charging his car for a total of 100,000 miles. To put this in perspective, a BMW 3 Series owner would spend over $8,000 filling up for gas for 100,000 miles, and the difference can be clearly seen. Additionally, the maintenance and servicing costs were about $1,741, which put the total cost around $4,732. That's quite inexpensive. The $1,741 were spent mainly on changing the air filter in the HVAC system at 36,000 miles, or 58,000 kilometers, which cost him roughly $136. Then there was $410 on wiper blade changing, wheel alignment, and brake bleed, which was done at 95,000 miles, or 153,000 kilometers. He also had a few components changed under the Tesla warranty, like the wooden trim dashboard at 51,000 miles, or 82,000 kilometers, the passenger window seal at 63,000 miles, or 101,000 kilometers, the front left safety restraint fault error was fixed at 71,000 miles, or 114,000 kilometers, and then the driver's headrest at 93,000 miles, 150,000 kilometers. Amazingly enough, there were no replacements or fixes needed for the first 50,000 miles. This shed some light on Tesla's maintenance and service as well, with Imam having mentioned that he was loaned a temporary Tesla as well when his car was in the garage. Tesla also promotes the DIY replacement of certain components, with a much cheaper air filter for the HVAC system available on Amazon. Tesla has a tutorial on how to change it on YouTube as well. This further drives down costs. Imam did mention that he had to put down $1,200 on changing the tires at 45,000 miles, which increased the total a bit. But having compared the gas versus charging costs, this extra expense won't matter much. All in all, you may pay $9,000 less on buying a BMW 3 Series, but an electric vehicle, especially a Tesla, will cost you much less to maintain in the long run, a little over one-third the cost per 100,000 miles. With battery technology rapidly improving and talks of a million-mile battery coming, the battery degradation will reduce even more in the future. 
That's definitely something that future customers need to look into when buying a car. The zero emissions and greater mobility argument might not convince some people, but lower maintenance costs will definitely sound sweeter to them. Battery degradation, which represents the loss in capacity and range over time with increasing mileage, is one of the biggest concerns of new electric vehicle buyers. We have occasionally seen some interesting data about battery degradation over the year gathered by Tesla owners, but rarely anything directly from Tesla. Recently, the automaker released its 2019 impact report, and as part of it, Tesla shared a rare chart showing energy retention. It only includes Models S and Model X vehicles up to 200,000 miles, which had been on the road for longer than the Model 3 and Y. According to the company's data, the average vehicle battery in a Tesla should still have about 90% of its original capacity after 200,000 miles, or 322,000 kilometers of usage. That's a very good result of just 10% battery capacity and range degradation, 1% per 20,000 miles, or 32,200 kilometers. Assuming 250 miles per full cycle, just for illustrative purposes, it's also about 800 cycles with a degradation rate of 1% per 80 cycles. That's a lot, especially since typically a car is scrapped after about 200,000 miles in the US. In Europe, it's 150,000 miles, or 241,000 kilometers. Tesla's approach is to design the pack in such a way so they could outlast the car. In other words, batteries should not be a problem, and besides the rare faulty battery, a normal user will never have to worry about replacing the pack. In the case of an electric car, this degradation in its total energy capacity means its maximum range shrinks over time. There are many factors that play into this. Some are choices by the various automakers, such as how much of the battery's total capacity to make available, narrower swings in the state of charge are friendlier to longevity, and some based on the owner's behavior. For instance, the Tesla Model 3 specifies that charging above 90% shouldn't be done for daily use, only for trips, although it doesn't explicitly say what the long-term ramifications might be for regularly going above that threshold. What would Tesla do with these old batteries? The iPhone popularized the non-removable batteries. Customers grew familiar with a gradual decline in capacity over the course of around two years. Apple claims its lithium-ion batteries are designed to hold 80% of their capacity after 500 charge cycles. In a July article that called for more repairable devices, the World Economic Forum claimed that smartphones account for about 10% of all global e-waste. As cars move from refillable gas tanks to batteries, could the auto industry be facing a similar environmental disaster? Will we see Teslas piling up in scrap heaps as owners decide the price of a new battery isn't worth it for an old EV? Not quite. Replacing your car's battery is still a lot easier and more worthwhile than doing the same for your phone. It's also much less likely to be an issue for most drivers. But the industry Tesla helped create still has one major problem to deal with. What do you do with all those old car batteries? EV analyst Sam Abuel Samid believes the business model will likely evolve when more electric cars reach the 100,000 mile mark. He said eventually a battery may lose too much capacity to be useful in a car. It will still have a useful life for a stationary storage and other applications as well as recycling. Lithium ion researcher Jeff Don agrees, arguing that stationary storage as a use for the intermittent sources of renewable energy, like solar and wind, could pair with million mile batteries to provide clean electricity even when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining. Old car batteries could perhaps find a new lease on life on the grid, ultimately outlasting the car they were meant to power. Recycling is another use for old batteries. At the company's annual shareholder event this month, Musk said that batteries are quote, essentially high-grade ore, and it's much better to get materials from old batteries than mines. Musk estimated that in 30 to 40 years, there would be enough recyclable batteries on the road that Tesla won't have to mine more materials from the earth. Government policy can also push manufacturers to reuse materials. Jessica Richter, who studies circular economic policies at Lund University, tells Inverse that the European Union currently has, quote, the most ambitious policy proposals for promoting a life cycle perspective to managing EV batteries, saying, quote, these proposals cover both how much of the battery should be made from recycled materials and how much of old batteries materials should be recycled. She says it's a good start for linking production and recycling, but quote, we will see how it plays out in reality. Evidence shows that battery production in China has already started to incentivize recycling in the country. Now that you've watched the video, let me know what you think about Tesla cars reaching 100,000 miles of range in the comment section below.